Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another video. Interesting situation weather-wise across the Los Angeles metro area today as we had a stout-looking tornado occur in the Montebello neighborhood of Los Angeles, just on the east side of LA. As you can see here, it was a pretty stout tornado. It had a nice funnel associated with it. Uh, a couple seconds here, you'll see again the uh, very nice funnel associated with this tornado. Lots of debris there at the surface did quite a bit of damage there in that Montebello neighborhood of LA. You can see a bunch of different uh, a bunch of pieces of buildings and such in, in that debris cloud there from this particular video. So pretty stout, potentially strong tornado, obviously something we don't see very often at all in the Los Angeles metro area. It was not expected to happen today as well. Just a general thunderstorm risk from the Storm Prediction Center out there. Um, so thunderstorms were a possibility. Tornadic activity, not so much. Uh, so I thought it'd be a, a nice opportunity to do a little off-the-cuff quick breakdown of the meteorology behind this event. This tornado occurred about two, two and a half hours ago. As I'm recording this, just before 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time, uh, this occurred uh, about two and a half hours ago or so. So we're fresh off the event. I've got some data to show, uh, and we're going to go through some potential, uh, give some potential reasons why this tornado may have happened in such an unexpected uh, location. So here's a broad view of the radar in and around the Los Angeles metro area. You can see just very scattered showers and some very light convection in here possibly as well. Uh, just some rain showers approaching the coast. And we're going to focus on this little guy right there. That is our storm. Very tiny storm. You can see it perks up a little bit on reflectivity there. Uh, but doesn't, you know, at first glance, if you were to just look at this mosaic radar picture, you wouldn't really think of any tornadic supercells coming out of this. If we zoom in a little bit on our storm, this is our storm right here on the uh, left side of your picture. Not, uh, you know, anything major uh, as far as reflectivity goes, but we'll go through the uh, evolution of this storm here. You can see it does strengthen a little bit, does acquire some rotation as it moves toward the Montebello area. You can see a little bit of a couplet there. Here's Montebello, velocity on the right. This is just base velocity. A little bit of a couplet right in there develops. We'll go on a few more scans, and this is when it looks to be at its strongest right here. Definitely taking on that supercell shape, nice little kidney bean shape right there. Very tiny supercell. This is probably no more than five, six miles across, but a very tight couplet right in there just on the southwest side of Montebello, and that was associated with this particular tornado. Moved on through, did try to uh, re-intensify later on, did not drop another tornado as, that I know of. Uh, this was the only one that it produced. So interesting situation, very tiny supercell. All right, let's take a look at some weather data here. This is the current 500 millibar map from the SPC mesoanalysis page. Just for context, LA is right here. And you can see very clearly, nice broad trough that is impinging into the western half of the country. Um, but you can see here that the belts, strongest belt of flow associated with this trough well off to the east and south or southeast of the Los Angeles area. We're approaching the somewhat close to the center of the, of the circulation aloft. You, of course, this is not a closed circulation by any means, but you, can, you do see that the colder air aloft, this is a minus 28 degree isotherm right here, definitely dropping south a little bit. So we should have some very cold temperatures aloft. And as we have talked about before on this channel, that is a, a textbook sign for a cold core type setup. Now, this is not going to be a cold core setup by any means, but we are seeing some colder temperatures aloft. That may mean we have some nice low-level instability to work with. We'll take a look at some proximity soundings here in a second. But on the other hand, with the trough being uh, somewhat moving out of the region, uh, we're moving away from the strongest flow associated with that trough, the exit region of the trough. You would not expect that deep layer shear would be super strong here. The strongest deep layer shear would definitely be over here in the exit region of this trough where those winds are strongest aloft. Uh, but here, closer to the center of the trough, not so much. Let's look down at the surface. And you'll see here not too much going on out here uh, at the surface. Maybe a little bit of remnant troughiness out here off the west coast. We did have, as we talked about yesterday in our forecast discussion for the upcoming severe weather event across the plains and southeast later this week, we talked and, and showed that very tightly wound circulation out here across the uh, west coast of California. That has since moved off to the north. And we are left with this somewhat just basic surface troughing here out across the west coast. Interesting feature there, not any tightly wound circulation by any means, but this could have, may have played a little bit of a role in backing those winds 
near the coast. You can see the exit region. We're just to the east of the axis of this surface trough here in the Southern California area. So those winds at the surface may have backed a little bit. That may have uh, at least had a slight enhancement of the low level shear. Again, we'll take a look at some soundings here in a second. So from a synoptic and mesoscale point of view, not too much in the way, not, not a very uh, evident setup as far as tornado potential goes out here. That tells me that we are much more relying on thermodynamics uh, than we are with kinematics with this particular setup. Let's take a look at, this is our satellite view, just to show you that this, we do see some, quite a bit of convection, quite a bit of bubbly cumulus here with this onshore flow uh, moving onto the west coast of California here. Again, LA is right in here. And you'll notice just, you know, broad area of showers here, but this little storm right there, you can see somewhat of a robust, more robust uh, cumulus or cumulonimbus there with this storm, very low topped, uh, of course, not expecting a lot of instability with this particular event. If we look at our mixed layer cape, let me zoom in to our southwest sector. So here is our mixed layer cape currently, and you can see barely 100 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape here across the very uh, coastal regions of Southern California there, including the LA Metro. So this is not a high cape, uh, high instability setup by any means. Um, but the caveat to that is that all of the instability there is, is concentrated in the lowest levels of the atmosphere. This is a wrap proximity sounding from 18Z just before the tornado occurred. You, you'll see right away, not much instability to speak of. Mixed layer cape, just over 100 joules per kilogram. First glance, you'd say that's not going to be a severe weather uh, setup at all. But notice the 0 to 3 kilometer cape is at 90. So that basically tells you 3 cape is at 90, total mixed layer cape is at about 100. So 90% of the instability in this profile is concentrated in that lowest three kilometers of the atmosphere. That is a classic sign for these more thermodynamically driven events, i.e. or e.g. cold core events that rely on the thermodynamics amid somewhat weaker shear than what you'd expect for a typical supercell tornado type setup. Because you have very strong low level instability that is able to stretch any spin in the low levels into the vertical very efficiently and as a result, you can get very strong stretching of that spin and you can get a much easier tornado genesis in these situations where you have strong low level instability. Notice that the hotograph, we do maybe have just ever so slight veering and curvature in that hotograph, in that, in that low level hotograph. Deep layer shear, effective shear is about 12 knots, zero to six kilometer shear though above 30 knots. So we're, we're somewhat right on the margin for supercells here. And as you saw by the radar, this was definitely a supercell. It definitely had that um, you know, bean shape to it, if you will, that little kidney bean shape right there, rotation on the southern flank. So definitely a very small supercell amid a shear that was maybe marginally favorable for supercells uh, in the vertical there. So uh, we did have a little bit of spin potentially in the low levels, uh, which was able to be stretched very efficiently into the vertical by this strong low level instability. Now, because we have such limited instability in the vertical, that means we're going to have pretty low top storms. This is a vertical cross section posted by Joey Picca, who is an SBC meteorologist uh, of the storm that when it was at its peak. And you can see it extends barely above 10,000 feet in altitude. So this was an extremely, extremely low top storm. Here's a velocity slice ongoing tornado here barely 12, 13,000 foot tops with this storm. And uh, given this uh, small amount of instability here, really concentrated in the lowest levels, we're gonna have small storms for sure. Uh, and as you can see by this slice, a vertical uh, cross section through the storm, these storms were extremely tiny. Usually we think of low top storms as maybe 20, 30,000 feet out here on the plains. But this is, this is pretty next level for uh, small, uh, low top supercells, just barely above 10,000 feet in height. All right, we took a look at a wrap model proximity sounding. Let's move to another model, the NAM, the three kilometer NAM, and take a look at one of its proximity soundings now. Shows a little bit more instability, over 200 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape. But again, look at that zero to three kilometer cape, 152. So once again, you know, maybe over three quarters of the total mixed layer cape in this environment is concentrated in that lowest three kilometers uh, above the surface. That is a textbook sign for enhanced a stretching potential with any spin near the surface. A little bit of low level curvature you see once again in this photograph. So this, uh, no doubt in my mind, had was perhaps somewhat of a cold core-esque 
cold core esque situation where you had that again that strong low level instability, a little bit of shear. Perhaps it could have been from the environment, a little bit of back surface winds. We look at our surface data here. That This is at 19Z, so just after the tornado occurred, but you'll see that Los Angeles uh, wind barb there out of the due south. Uh, so maybe a little bit of uh, enhanced backing on the east side of that surface trough helped to uh, enhance the low-level shear just slightly. Also could have been topographical. I know I'm not super familiar with the topography of the LA area, but I do know there are lots of little mountains, uh, little strips of mountains within that metro area. Could have played a role, but nonetheless, very uh, uh, modest low-level spin or shear was stretched very efficiently into the vertical by this strong low-level instability, uh, as is typical of a cold core setup. Even though this was not, again, a cold core type setup, uh, this was definitely a uh, the similar processes at work in this particular situation. Here's a tweet from Cameron Nixon, the Hodograph Master, showing some old uh, strong tornado cases in the Los Angeles metro area, and you'll see a very similar profile to what we have going on with our uh, uh, with today's tornado. Very limited instability. This is one from uh, November of 1966. Very very limited instability. Um, most unstable cape below 100 joules per kilogram there, so very limited instability. But we do have a little bit of low-level shear, and you'll notice that any the instability that we do have is concentrated in the lowest levels of the atmosphere. Therefore, it, it can very efficiently stretch any of this low-level spin, which is somewhat enhanced in these cases, into the vertical to better aid in tornado genesis. Here's another case from 1983, March 1st, 1983. Once again, limited low, uh, instability only just over 200 joules per kilogram of cape but again it's all concentrated in the lowest levels of the atmosphere so any low level shear a low level spin going to be stretched into the vertical very easily uh, to make a tornadic supercell so that's going to wrap it up not much to talk about here uh, it's not a very synoptically evident setup but if you look at the thermodynamics and the processes processes at play i think the strong low level instability had a lot to do with this um, this is a parameter space, even though, you know, maybe in the planes, we'd say that this is, we, you know, scoff at this in the planes, you know, 200 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape, very limited low level shear. Well, in Los Angeles, Los Angeles, this is a high end setup for tornadoes. Uh, and this is a classic tornado setup in Southern California, especially across the LA Metro, strong low level instability, uh, concentrated in the lowest levels of the atmosphere with just enough low level spin to uh, be able to be stretched into the vertical from that strong low-level cape uh, and aid in tornado genesis in any, any supercells uh, that took advantage of this environment, which we did have one today. Very small supercell, given very weak storm relative inflow as well. Um, this distance from the uh, right mover storm motion to your low-level hodograph is very small in this case. Uh, so the uh, that tends to create much smaller supercells, and you can see here, uh, very small supercell, more no more than five six miles across, but it can do a lot in this environment, which is definitely higher end for this particular uh, area. So that's going to do it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.